Welcome on Scylla Summit presentation about Scylla Operator 1.0 release. In this lightning session, I will present the main features of Scylla offering for Kubernetes. My name is Maciej Zimnoch. I'm a software engineer at Scylla, and currently I'm working on delivering value to the Scylla operator. Let's start with a few details about Scylla operator. Scylla operator is an Apache licensed open source project. You can find all the uh, source code on our GitHub page, and we also provide documentation where you can find more details about uh, supported features and procedures. Currently, we support Minikube and Google Kubernetes Engine, which means that we run our automated test suites there. Of course, you can use the operator on other Kubernetes providers and on-premise deployments. The architecture and implementation details were presented on the last Scylla Summit in 2019 in San Francisco. There was a great talk by Yanis Sarkadas, which I highly recommend if you are interested in, in this particular topic. So let's move on to the supported features. Scylla operator supports scaling operations. Uh, this includes scaling cluster up and scaling down. Configuration can be rolled out automatically, as well as uh, Scylla version upgrades, including major upgrades. Scylla operator also provides some auto-healing features. Clusters can be configured to use multiple availability zones. And we also have integration with Scylla manager, which is uh, being used for cluster repairs and backups. And single uh, Scylla operator can be used to manage multiple Scylla clusters within the same Kubernetes. So let's go over this list again, but this time focusing on more details about these features. So in this example, we already have a single rack cluster containing three Scylla nodes. User wants to scale it up to have six nodes. This is as easy as changing one number in Scylla cluster spec. So when Scylla cluster spec is changed, Scylla operator will begin scaling up the cluster. Existing nodes will keep their unique identity and new nodes are added one by one. Next node is added only when previous node declares uh, to be ready to serve the traffic. And then next node joins one by one until the desired number of nodes is reached. Next feature I would like to describe is automatic rollout, especially useful when configuration change is introduced. So when user finishes updating his desired configuration, he can use kubectl to restart each node one by one. And when node is restarted, configuration is being picked up. So nodes are restarted one by one, and uh, each node waits until previous node is ready, similar to the previous example. Up until Scylla Operator 1.0, only patch version upgrades were supported. What's new in 1.0 is that users are able to upgrade their Scylla cluster to next minor and major versions. This is as easy as changing desired Scylla version in presented cluster spec example. So Scylla upgrade takes care of draining the node to ensure that upgrade is transparent to ongoing traffic. Scylla operator backs up the data and Scylla system tables to prevent any data loss in case of any failure during the procedure. And once again, nodes are upgraded one by one. You may ask what happens when procedure fails. For 1.0, Scylla operator will pause it at the validation step and will require manual intervention. Next versions, we plan to implement automatic rollback. Current manual restore procedure can be found in documentation. 1.0 release provides also node detection and automatic replace. So let's say we have a free node cluster. Each of them are using local drives. On each of the major cloud providers, data on local disk is lost when instance crashes or if it's restarted. This means that persistent volume claims attached to each of the pods are bound to a specific Kubernetes nodes. So when instance crashes, data on that node is lost. Scylla operator detects such failures and triggers a replace dead node procedure automatically. Operator will spawn another pod on different available instance, and then the rest of the existing Scylla node will take care to restream the data belonging to failed node back to the new node in order to restore the data replication factor. And once new node is up and running, we recommend to run a repair. And for repairs, and not only them, we have an integration with Scylla Manager. 
Scheduling repair requires adding a few additional lines to the Sula cluster definition. You may configure multiple repairs. Um, each of them have knobs controlling repair speed, when repair should start, whether it should be recurrent, or maybe you're interested in repairing only particular key spaces. So Scylla Manager will take care to run this task on your cluster. And second benefit of integration of Scylla Manager are backups. Configuration is almost the same as repairs, only knobs are different. In this example, backup is configured to run weekly, have 100 megabytes of maximum upload speed, and data is transferred to the Google Cloud Storage bucket. Scylla Manager also supports Amazon S3 and other S3 compatible APIs like Ceph or Minio. You are safe from node crashes thanks to auto healing. Your data has correct replication factor thanks to repairs. And also you have backups. But eventually someone will pull the wrong plug and one of the availability zones goes down. So Scylla cluster may survive such disasters when it's configured to use different availability zones for each of the cluster racks. I will show an example during the demo. And last but not least, Scylla operator can manage multiple Scylla clusters within the same Kubernetes cluster. So I prepared a little demo, so let's see operator in action. So here we have two files. One of them is Scylla cluster definition and second one we'll, we'll use to generate uh, the traffic. So let's see how the Scylla cluster definition looks like. At the top, we have some basic stuff like uh, name of the cluster and the namespace uh, under which uh, this cluster will be spawned. And then we have a specification, which uh, on the top we have a ver Scylla version uh, and Scylla manager agent version. Uh, a few performance tweaks like CCTL uh, enabling host networking. And then we can find the, the topology definition. The cluster is going to consist of single data center called US East 1 and two racks called US East 1 and B and US East 1 C. Both of them are almost the same. Uh, first, we have names of the config maps holding Scylla and agent configurations. And then we have a number of members, uh, which means how many uh, Scylla nodes or pods are expected in this rack. And then uh, we have a storage, uh, CPU and memory requirements. So for this case, each Scylla uh, node will have a local write disk, which basically means NVMe drive uh, of 500 gigabytes. We'll use 31 CPUs and 110 gigabytes of memory. The placement field allows to provide some requirements for Kubernetes nodes. So in this example, uh, we require that a node must be in US East 1B availability zone. And tolerations. We use that for uh, to, to tell Kubernetes that we want to schedule Scylla on dedicated nodes exclusively. And the second rack definition is almost the same. Uh, the only difference is uh, the zone name. We are spawning the node. So you can use kubectl apply to, cre uh, to create this cluster. But I already did, uh, and it's up and running. I, at least I hope so. So let's check uh, if uh, I have enough pods. So I should have six six pods. And yes, I have three pods in US East 1B and three in US East 1C. So if you are familiar with uh, tooling for Cassandra, well, you still may use it in uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so for example, let's check if the rack information is uh, available in Gossip. Uh, we can use node tool status uh, to, to check that. So here we execute the node to status uh, on one of the pods in Scylla container. Yeah, and we can we can see that six nodes are there, three of them are in US East 1B, and three of them are East, East 1C. Okay, even though um, performance tweaks are expected in next releases, Scylla and Kubernetes already provide some good numbers. So to validate that, uh, let's spin some traffic using Cassandra Stress. This file contains two Kubernetes jobs definitions. Each of them will spawn the Cassandra Stress running some traffic, uh, pointing to the our cluster. So let's use kubectl apply apply uh, to, to spawn it. And two jobs were created. So 
Let's check if they are running or not. Yeah, and they are running for seven seconds. So let's switch to the monitoring. As you can see, the traffic is starting. Uh, we are seeing some 25,000 to 33,000 operations per node, and it's growing. Okay, so let's let's wait a minute, and meanwhile, uh, I can show you how to edit the Scylla cluster spec used uh, for, for example, scaling up or uh, for Scylla upgrade. So this is very easy. You use kubectl, you provide the namespace, uh, you provide your intent that you want to edit, and you want to edit Scylla cluster. So here we have a current specification, and uh, at the bottom you will find the status. So this status tells us that uh, both of the racks have uh, expected number of three, and all of them are ready, which means they are ready to serve the traffic and they use 4.2.0 as a version. So if you would like to, for example, upgrade to enterprise version, we just simply change this string to 2000.0.0 uh, or something like that. Or for example, if you would like to scale up the cluster, we can, for example, uh, increase the number of members in this particular rack. So this, for example, we would like to scale to six, save this file, and uh, that's it. Okay, let's go back to the monitoring. And as we can see, uh, we are barely hitting 10% of the load, having uh, 25,000 operations per second, which is uh, about 150,000 in the entire cluster. So for the next cell operator release, we would like to focus on automatic restore procedure procedure for live node replacing, which provides better consistency guarantees. Uh, replacing seed node is also something we'd like to allow. Uh, with multi-region support, we are waiting until Kubernetes Federation will be stable enough. We would like to focus more on performance improvements to squeeze, squeeze out even uh, better numbers. And uh, add support for more Kubernetes platforms like EKS and Azure. That's it for today. In case you would like to provide some feedback or contact me, uh, my email address and operator mailing list is on the slide. Thank you for your time and make sure to try out the new Scylla operator on your Kubernetes cluster. Bye.